Here's an absolute beast of an integral from the 2020 edition of the Berkeley Integration B. And it looks pretty ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, you got an integral from negative to positive infinity of 2020 to the negative of the absolute value of x divided by 1 plus 5 to the inverse sine of the fifth power of the sine of x. So yeah, it's pretty daunting. But integrals like these have a very nice property by virtue of structure. And we're going to make use of that property to evaluate this integral. And you'll be pleasantly surprised as to how exactly this plays out. First up, we're going to call our integral i so we have something to refer to. And I'm going to define an integral i sub 1 as the integral from negative a to positive a. So we're integrating over a symmetric interval. And I'm going to introduce the function f of x as an even function and g of x as an odd function. And the structure of the integrand goes like this. You have f of x up top divided by 1 plus some constant b to the g of x. So this is the structure of the integrand with these types of functions. And it's this structure that makes evaluating integrals like these quite easy. And that's going to that's gonna be clear in a short while. First up, I need to perform a transformation from the x world to the negative x world. So that means i sub 1 is now the integral from positive a to negative a of f of negative x divided by 1 plus b to the g of negative x. Oh, sorry about that. The exponent should look smaller. Okay, cool. And the differential element also has this extra negative sign. And you can get rid of it by switching up the limits of integration to introduce another negative sign that cancels out the first one. So you're left with the uh, dx term as before. And because f of x is an even function, f of negative x equals f of x, whereas g is an odd function, so g of negative x equals negative gx. So that means you can get rid of this negative sign and you can just pop out this negative sign here. Okay, cool. So this is the structure of your integral i sub 1 under our transformation from x to negative x. And it's quite similar to the original structure we defined. The only difference being that instead of b to the g of x downstairs, you have b to the negative g of x. So what we're going to do next is something interesting. We're going to multiply and divide the integrand by b to the g of x. Okay, cool. So we have f of x divided by 1 plus b to the negative g of x. And after the multiplication, you're going to get b to the g of x times f of x. And because of this multiplication, you're going to get a uh, 1 in place, uh, you're going to get a b to the g of x in place of the 1. And these two are multiplicative inverses, so they cancel out to 1. So you're left with b to the g of x plus 1. So now that you have these two structures, I'm referring to the ones that are now differently colored, what we're going to do next is we're going to add up the uh, integrals, uh, the integrals representing i sub 1. So you're integrating from negative a to positive a in both cases. So you can just combine the integrands. And from the numerator, we see that we can factor out this f of x term. So we have f of x factored out, and you're left with 1 plus b to the g of x divided by both have the same denominator of 1 plus uh, b to the g of x. So you have some nice cancellation taking place here. And this implies that i sub 1 equals the integral from negative a. Oh, sorry about that. We added these two structures, right? So adding them means you have 2 times i sub 1. So 2 times i sub 1 equals the integral from negative a to positive a of f of x with respect to x. And because f of x is an even function, instead of integrating from negative a to positive a, you could just integrate from 0 to a and double the result. So that gets rid of the... Uh, the, the factor of 2 on both sides. And this implies that i sub 1 equals the integral from 0 to a of f of x with respect to x. This is what we call an even odd decomposition, and it plays into the integral at hand quite nicely. 
because you have 2020 to the negative of the absolute value of x upstairs. So if you replace x by negative x, then because of the absolute because of the absolute value function, you still have x because the absolute value of negative x is equal to the absolute value of x, of course. So you have an even function up top, and you have 1 plus 5, a constant, to the inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of x. And we know that sine of x is an odd function. So that means sine of negative x to the fifth power equals negative sine to the fifth power of x. By a similar token, the inverse sine function is a negative function, is a uh, is an odd function as well. So that means inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of x, or the negative of it, equals the negative of the inverse sine of sine to the fifth power of x. So you have the requisite structure to perform an even odd decomposition. And this implies that your integral i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of 2020 to the negative of the absolute value of x. And because we're integrating on the right half of the x-axis, uh, the absolute value of x equals x itself. So on integration, we get 2020 to the negative x divided by you're going to get a negative natural log 2020 in the denominator. And the limits of integration are infinity and 0. So in the limit as x goes to infinity, 2020 to the negative x goes to 0. And as x approaches 0, this term will approach 1 anyway. So this implies that i equals 0. Uh, you have this extra negative sign as well outside. 0 minus 1 minus 1 by the natural log of 2020. So this implies that i equals the reciprocal of the natural log of 2020. So that's a pretty friendly answer to such a frightening looking integral. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.